Now for these two faces, I'll move over to the mesh tools and click extrude individual. And again, hit the right mouse button. And now I'll hit S to scale them down. And before scaling them down, I have to change my pivot point here to individual origins. Scale them now again. Okay. I'll hit the E key to scale them out to extrude them. Right about here. E once more for a small extrusion. And S to scale the extruded faces down. Alright. Now E. We want another extrusion here. Right mouse button click again and S. To scale the extruded faces down. At about here. And time for a final extrusion. Hit the E key and extrude out. At about here. Okay. Now that we've finished with the extrusions here, I'll hit the X key and select the lit faces. I'll add some mesh now in our object here. And I'm doing this in edit mode and the newly created mesh will be a part of the existing mesh here. I'll hit Shift A and add mesh a plane. I'll hit R and Y to rotate my plane on the Y axis and rotate it for 90 degrees. I'll hit 3 on my numeric keypad for the right ortho view. And I'll position my plane G and Z to move it on the Z axis where the side part here is. Okay. Now I'll hit 1 on my numeric keypad for the front ortho view and hit Z and X to move my plane here on the X axis. Alright. Now time for some more extrusions. I'll hit the E key to extrude. At about here. Hit E for a tiny extrusion. And hit S to scale the extruded face down. E, yet another extrusion. S to scale the extruded face down. And one final extrusion. I'll hit the E key to extrude. And this time around I'll bring the extruded face just a bit in. Okay. Now the modeling part here is finished. We are done with our model here. We are going to edit our materials a bit and add some new. I'll hit this little plus icon again to add the new material and click new. And this material will be called black. And as you can imagine, I'll change the diffuse color of this one to a solid black color. I'll also bring the diffuse intensity down to zero the specular intensity down to zero and I'll also click shadeless. Now I'm not sure whether shadeless here affects the material in the blender game engine but the fact is that we want a solid black a flat color here, a flat material. So now we have the material in place and we have the face selected and we're going to just click assign. Okay. Now adding another material to my object here, click this little plus icon and by doing so in edit mode we have, as you can see, lots of materials on the same object. And I'll click new and change the name of this material to hexa underscore 2. Okay. Now this one will be slightly darker than white about here. And I'll change the specular settings here a bit. I'll bring the intensity down to 0 0.3. I'll also bring the hardness from 50 down to 25. Now I'll hit the A key to deselect all and move down here and hold the Alt key and click the right mouse button to select this row of faces here. And I'll uh, click Assign to assign the hexa 2 material to the selected faces. Now I'll hit the A key once more and hold down the Alt key and let's hope I can select them. Zoom in a bit and hold down the Alt key again and right mouse button click here. OK and I'm selecting this loop of faces here. And again I'll click Assign to assign my hexa 2 material here on the selected faces. and Moving over to the side, I'll hold down the Alt key to select these faces here and hold down Shift Alt to click and select these as well. And you can see we are selecting this part here. 
and again we have the hexa2 material selected and click assign to assign the specific material to the selected faces all right i think we're good and it's time now to modify the hexa1 material click it to select it and as you can imagine we won't be using any image textures or uv unwrapping our object here for this uh, game engine project but the truth is that we can create all sorts of materials just by using the material options here and we have plenty of options to create varied materials we can change the diffuse the specular uh, settings here and add some emit and stuff like that so we're going to move on with uh, our material here and I'm going to under the diffuse tab here and click ramp and click the black color here I'll bring the alpha up to 1 just to make sure that this uh, color here will appear on our ramp and you can see the black color here I'll select it and drag it we want a bit more black here on our material and as you can already see we have some variation here on the material surface even by not creating any much texture or anything similar to that I'll set the black position here to 0 0.2 OK and I think it's, that's pretty nice I'll bring the intensity down to 0 0.7 and I'll change the specular from Cooktor to Wordslow. Okay. And again, this is the main material. Whenever we haven't add one of these materials, this material will be applied. And I'll hit the Tab key now to switch from Edit to Object Mode. And now that we've set up our materials here, I'll hit the N key for the side panel here and scroll down. Let's move over to the display options, click this triangle to expand them and I'll change the shading from multi texture here to GLSL and by changing the shading here to GLSL we are allowing Blender to use uh, shadows and uh, advanced materials and some other cool stuff and of course when you're changing the shading here to GLSL you should also change the viewport shading here from solid to texture Okay, now I'll hit 7 on my numeric keypad to switch to top of a view. Right click my lamp to select it and hit the G key to grab it. Let's move it at about here. Okay, and I now change my lamp options here. I'm going to change this lamp to a sun lamp. And you can immediately see that we're having some shadows here, even in the viewport. I'll hit R and X to rotate my lamp here on the X axis and R and Z to rotate it on the Z axis. At about here. Now I want to do another thing here for my object. I'm going to right click to select it, hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode. And I'll hit the A key to deselect all and A again to select all. And I'll hit Ctrl N to recalculate my object normals to point outside. And you see that just by making this, our object here looks a lot better. Now I'll hit the Tab key to switch back to Object Mode. Select the lamp again. I'm going to slightly change the lamp color. Click. And let's make it just a bit blue. OK. And I'll hit 1 on my numeric keypad to switch the front author view. Hit Shift D to duplicate my lamp move it down and to the side at about here and I'll hit 7 again on my numeric keypad hit Z and Y to move my lamp on the Y axis and this will be a point lamp and I'll also change the color for my lamp here make it slightly orange to yellow okay now we have our object ready we have our light set up of course we might be changing the materials or the lamps here later on but for now it looks pretty nice I'm going to add some logic on our object here I'll hit the N key to make this panel go away and I'll also split my 3D view click and drag into true 3D views and I'll change the upper one to a logic editor now I'll hit the N key to make the properties here go and 
I'm selecting the object, we want the hexa object here and we have sensor, controller and actuator for our object. I'll click add sensor and add an always sensor and add actuator and add a motion actuator. And of course to make it all work we have to click this dot here and drag to connect this sensor to the actuator. Alright. So what we do want here for our part is to always rotate using this value here on the z-axis. And now let's hit P while the cursor is over the 3D view to take a look at the Blender game engine. And you can see that we have our object here rotating but it's rotating using the wrong axis. Now I'll hit the escape key to move back to my 3D view. And there are actually two ways to fix this. One of them is to click this little L here. And by clicking this we're telling Blender that we want this object to rotate on the local axis. And now if I hit the P key to rotate you can see that the object now rotates exactly how we want it to. Now I'll hit the escape key and show you the second way to fix this little issue here. I'll click this L key again and expand my 3D view. And in order to fix the rotating issue now and uh, generally when you're facing some uh, rotation or scaling issues in Blender, best thing to do is to select your uh, object here and move over to the object menu, click it and move over to apply and apply rotation and scale. So now if we hit the P key for the Blender game engine you can see that the object now rotates exactly how we want it to. And again we have our working system here. If you hit 7, 8 and 9 on your numeric keypad you can see the particles appearing. We can also speed it up, slow it down and use all sorts of key combinations here. Now I'll hit the escape key, I want to do one final thing. And I'll move over to the second layer for a while. We have our particles here. And I'll change the material for the particles here. I'm going to select this one. And since these objects here are just particles, for our scene, we don't really need them to uh, cast or receive shadows. So I'm moving over to the shadow options. Click this little triangle here to expand the shadow options. And I'm going to uncheck receive and cast buffered shadows. And again, they're tiny objects. We don't care about them, you know, receiving or casting shadows in our scene. So selecting the second particle and uncheck. And we'll, we'll do that for all of them. And for the final one, deselect receive and cast buffered shadows. Okay. Now moving back to the first layer. And let's take another look at our system here and at our new object. I'll hit the P key to play and enter the Blender game engine. And you can see that it all works pretty nice. We have our system working, we have our part here built. And I'll hit the escape key and as you can see here we have uh, 6,850 faces. We're not even close to 7,000 faces, so this is pretty low poly at the moment. And we're going to save this one. I like it. Move over to the file menu, click, select save as, and I'll save this one as system 4. And of course, click save as Blender file. So, time to complete our object here. And for this one, we'll be adding some uh, the display here on our, our screens and as you can imagine you can also put an image here as part of a material or put a, an animation but we won't be using either image or animation and we'll be trying a little trick here and so I'll move on to the third layer click this little icon to move to layer 3 and I'll hit one on my numeric keypad to switch to front author view now I'll hit Shift A and add mesh plane. I'll hit the Tab key to switch from Object to Edit mode, and hit R, X, and 90 to rotate my plane here for 90 degrees on the x-axis. Now the plane here looks a bit weird, and that's because we have the uh, shading mode here set to textured to make it look better and. Uh, makes us and help us work easier. You should change it to solid. But there is another way to change the uh, shading mode here from texture to solid. And I'll switch back to texture. 
So if you hit the Z key on your keyboard while you're in the texture shading mode, you'll switch to wireframe mode. And then if you, if you hit Z again, you'll switch to solid mode. And that's just the tip. And now I'll hit Ctrl R while my cursor is over here for a loop cut. And you can see that Blender places a loop cut here. I'll scroll my mouse wheel up a bit just to get four loop cuts. And I'll left mouse click to confirm. Now I'll hit S and X to scale my loop cuts on the X axis. And as you can see, we're getting some weird scaling here. Uh, so I'll hit the right mouse button to cancel the scaling. And naturally, I have to change the pivot point here from individual origins to median point. So again, S and X to scale on the X axis at about here. Now Control R over here. We want four loop cuts here as well. I'm scrolling to my mouse wheel up. And now I'll hit S and Z to scale on the Z axis at about, at about here. All right. Now I'll hit Control Tab for the mesh select mode and select vertex. And hit the A key to select all and B for the selection tool. Click and drag, select this middle vertices here and I'll hit X to delete vertices. Now I'll hit B for the selection tool here again, click and drag, select those four vertices at the top and I'll hit G and Z to move them on the Z axis at about here. Now I'll hit the A key, B again, click and drag and hit G and X to move them on the X axis. Now I'll hit the A key to select all, B, click and drag, G and Z to grab and move on the Z axis. And once more, hit the A key to select all, hit B, click and drag, hit G and X to move on the X axis. Alright. Now I'm moving my cursor over here and I'll hit Ctrl R for loop cut and scroll my mouse wheel up once for two loop cuts. And now I'll hit X to delete faces. Once more, Ctrl R and scroll up once for two loop cuts and left mouse button to confirm and hit X to delete faces. Control R to loop cuts here as well and now X to delete the face. Control R to loop cuts here again and hit X and select delete face. Now we have our frame ready here. Uh, I'll hit the tab key to switch from edit to object mode and I'm going to move over to the object menu and select apply and apply rotation and scale. Just making sure that I won't be getting any issues later on. I'll add the material to my frame here. Click new for a new material. And I'm at the materials panel. I'll click over here at this field to change the name of the material to white. Okay. Now I'll bring the diffuse intensity up to 1, bring the specular intensity down to 0 and set the mid value here under the shading tab to 0 0.8. Alright. Now I'll hit Shift A to add another mesh and add a mesh circle. I'll hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode and hit R, X and 90 to rotate my circle here for 90 degrees on the X axis. And I'll also hit S to scale it down. OK. And I'll hit the E key now for an extrusion and you can see the extruded vertices. I'll hit the right mouse button to cancel any movement for the extruded vertices and I'll just hit S to scale them down. OK. Now I'll hit Shift A and add mesh another plane and by, editing, uh, by adding my plane here in edit mode it means that this plane now is part of the circle here, they're both in the same object. So we got our plane here in place, I'll hit R, X and 90 to rotate it for 90 degrees on the x-axis. I'll hit S to scale it down and S once more to further scale it down. And now I'll hit S and X to scale it on the x-axis as well. Now I'll hit G and Z Grab my plane here on the Z axis, move it up, and let's scale it up on the Z axis uh, about here. Okay, 
I'll hit Shift D for a duplicate and Z to move my duplicate on the Z axis. I'll hold down Shift, click those vertices, select both our planes here, and hit Shift D to duplicate them. And I'll also hit R and Y to rotate on the Y axis. Rotate the duplicates for 15 degrees on the global Y. You can see the rotation here at the bottom left corner. All right. Now I'll hit the A key to deselect all and A once more to select all. And I'll hit Ctrl and to recalculate my all object normals to point outside. Now I'll hit the Tab key to switch from Edit to Object Mode. And I'll also add the white material to this part as well. Now I'll hit Shift A and select text. Let's add some text. R, X and 90 for our text as well. I'll hit the Tab key to change the text and type in 74. Tab key again. And I'll move over to the text panel, to the text settings here. Click this little F icon for the text object data. And first thing I'm going to do is change the alignment here from left to center. And I'll also change the size, set it from 1 down to 0 0.4. And now I'll hit G and Z to move my text on the Z axis at about here. OK. Now I have my text in place. I'll add the uh, material, the white material to this one as well. And moving over to the object menu here, click and move up and select convert to and select mesh from curve meta surf text. Now if I hit the tab key, while I have my text here selected, you can see that the text now is mesh. So now that we have every, uh, let's hit the A key to deselect all and A again to select all. And let's try and see, I'll click remove doubles. And we don't have any, tab, any doubles here for our text. So we're fine. I'll hit the tab key to switch from edit to object mode. And once more, I'll click Object and apply the rotation and scale for my text here as well. Now I'm selecting my circle, right mouse button click to select it. And I'll split my 3D view here for a while. And I'll need a logic editor here. I'll hit the N key to make the properties here go. And for my circle here, I want a sensor, an always sensor, and a motion actuator. As always, click and drag to connect the sensor to the actuator. And I always want my circle here to rotate on the Y axis using this value. So now if I hit the P key to take a look. And as you can see, although we have the rotation here applied by the Blender game engine, I'll hit the escape key. We have our object here not appearing. Uh, not every part here is appearing, so while I'm at the white material, I'll also uncheck the back face here. So now let's hit the P key, and you can see that our display data thingy here works pretty fine. Now I'll hit the escape key. I have the circle here selected. I'll hold down the shift key to select the frame, and hit Control, Control P, and select that part into object. Now I'm going to select the text and hold down the shift key and of course hit control P and set back to object. So now if I select the frame here you can see and hit the G key to grab it you can see that as it moves along the other parts here follow. Alright. Now I'll hit B for the select tool here. Click and drag select all my objects and I'll hit M to move them all to the first layer. I'll also move to layer 1, click this little icon, and we have our data here. I'll right click the frame to select it, and hit R and Z to rotate on the Z axis. Let's rotate it on the Z axis for 90 degrees. You can see the rotation at the bottom left corner. And now I'll hit 3 on my numeric keypad to switch to right off of you. And I'll also hit Z to switch to the wireframe mode. And I'll hit Z and Z to move my uh, data here on the Z axis. 
and I'll also hit the S key to scale them down just to fit them in my screen here. And I'll hit 1 for the front overview. I'll hit D and X to move them on the X axis. Let's position them. Let's zoom a bit as well. And I'll hit D and X and let's put it about here. Alright. Now while the frame here is selected, I'll hold down the Shift key to select the hexa object and hit Ctrl P and set power to object. And we're doing this in order to have the data here uh, moving along, uh, following the rotation of the hex object. OK. Now I'll hit the A key to deselect all and select every part for, from our data display here. And what we want is to have the same thing here appearing on the left side. So I'll hit Alt D for a duplicate, hit X to move my duplicate on the X axis. Let's say at about here. And I'll now select the frame, click the frame to select it and hit R and Z, rotate it on the Z axis for 180 degrees as well. OK. And now I'll select the frame over here, move over to the object data. And let's take a look at the location. The location for this uh, object on the X axis is 3.68. So I'm going to select the frame here and set this one to minus 3.68. OK. Now it's time to move over to the texture mode for the viewport shading. And let's see how it all looks. I'll hit the P key for Blender Game Engine. And you can see that we're having our data displayed here. We have some sort of animation. So it looks also a bit more interesting. And I'll hit the escape key now. And I'll select my hexa object here. Hit 1 on my numeric keypad to switch to the front author view. And it happens to me all the time. I build something. I like it. And after a second look, I want to change a thing or two. So I'll hit the tab key here to switch from object to edit mode. Hit the A key to deselect all. I'm also going to check this uh, little icon here and that enables me to select even the faces or the vertices that are not visible. And I'll hit the B key for the select tool, click and drag. And I'll hit G and Z. Let's move this one up. Let's make those legs here a bit shorter. And I'll hit S and X to move it on the X, or excuse me, G and X to move it on the X axis. At about here. OK. Now tab key to switch back to object mode. Let's move over to the material panel. And I'm going to modify my materials just by a tiny bit. I'll change the black color position for the ramp on the hexa 1 material from 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. And I'll also select the hexa 2 material. I want to modify it a bit. Since we're not getting much of a difference here between the hexa 1 and the hexa 2 materials, so I'll make the hexa 2 darker. OK. And I'll also bring the specular intensity down to 0 0.25 and bring the hardness down to 20. OK. Now I'll hit the P key again while my cursor is over the 3D view to take another look. And I think it looks pretty nice. And we have our system here. Everything works in the Blender game engine. We're hitting keys and we're affecting our little toy here. It looks pretty nice. I'll hit the escape key. And as you can see, we have just touched the uh, 7000 faces here for our entire scene. And that's pretty nice. So I'm going to save this one. Click File, Save As. And I'll save it as System 5. And of course, click Save as Blender File. So moving on into building the environment for our little toy here. And I'll hit Shift A and add mass a circle. And this circle will use 40 vertices. And I'll hit 1 on my numeric keypad to switch to front of view. And hit Z and Z to move my circle on the Z axis. And I'll now hit the Tab key to switch from Object to Edit Mode. 
and hit S to scale up my circle. Now I'll hit the E key to extrude and Z to extrude on the Z axis. I'll extrude that about here. Now I'll hit E and Z to extrude once more on the Z axis. S to scale my extruded vertices down. E once more, right mouse button click to cancel any movement and S to scale my extruded vertices down. OK. Now E once more for another extrusion and Z. I'll move my vertices up. E and Z another extrusion on the Z axis. I'll hit the S key to scale my vertices here down. E another extrusion, right mouse button click and S to scale. And E for another extrusion on the Z axis. I'll scale them down and E once more on the Z axis for a final extrusion. Now I'll hit the A key to deselect all and A again to select all and I'll hit Ctrl N to recalculate the object normals to point outside. Now I'll move over to the modifiers panel, click this little icon for the object modifiers, click add modifier and add an edge split. Now that the edge split is in place, under the toolbar here, I'll click smooth for, for the shading and now hit the tab key to see my object. Looking good, I'll hit shift A and add a mesh cube. I'll hit Z and Z to move my cube on the Z axis. Let's move it down. Alright. And a bit more. Now I'll hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode and hit S to scale my cube down. I'll hit 1 on my mirror keypad for the front overview. Z and Z move it on the Z axis. I'll hit the A key to select all and select one, two, three, and four vertices and one again on my numeric keypad. I'll hit Z and Z. Alright, now I'll hit the A key to select all and seven on my numeric keypad to switch to top both of you. And I'll hit Z and Y. To move my cube here on the Y axis. Z again to switch to uh, solid view, solid shading for the viewport here. I'll hit S and X to scale my cube here on the X axis. I'll select 1, 2, 3, and 4 vertices, and actually I'm selecting this face here and hit Z and Y. Move it back. Now I'll select 1, 2 vertices. Hit Z and Z to move them down. And I'll also uh, select those two vertices and select the face again. And I'll hit S and X to scale the face on the X axis. Alright. Now I'll select one, hold down the Shift key, two, three, four, five, six. And the vertices we can't actually see. And I'll hit the X key and select delete faces. Okay. Now again, I've uh, worked with my cube here when in edit mode because I want the origin of the object to stay uh, pretty much at the center. And I'll now hit the tab key to switch from uh, edit to object mode. And I'll add an array modifier for my cube here. So as you can see, the array modifier uses the relative offset. It is set to 1 to create a clone and you can set the amount of clones here, you can have more but what we actually want here is to have the cube following the circle and in order to achieve it I'll hit shift A and add an empty I'll hit Z and Z to move my empty down and now select the cube again Let's change some settings on the array modifier here. I'll deselect, I'll uncheck relative offset, and check object offset. And the empty here is empty.006. 
back to the cube and I want the cube here, the area modifier, to use the empty dot zero zero six for the object offset and now if I hit R and Z on the empty you can see that I'm getting some copies here and the copies follow the empties rotation and create this result so back to the object modifier we have a count uh, of 8 here and I've rotated the empty for 10 degrees so in order to have the circle complete as you might imagine you we will need 36 uh, clones of the cube alright this looks pretty nice I'll hit shift A and add mess another circle and this circle will use let's see uh, 48 vertices I'll hit 1 on my numeric keypad to switch to front overview hit Z and Z, move the circle on the Z axis as well now I'll hit the tab key to switch from uh, object to edit mode and hit S to scale my circle up at about here I'll hit E and Z, extrude on the Z axis extrude on the Z axis once more and S to scale extrude right mouse button click and hit the S key to scale my uh, vertices here up and I want to actually cover the legs here of the uh, hexa object I'll hit the E key and Z to extrude on the Z axis scale my vertices here up, hit S and once more E and Z and I think we're good. Now I'll hit E for another extrusion and Z to extrude on Z axis and extrude my vertices down. Alright. Now for the circle, I'll also hit the A key to select all and A key to select all and Ctrl N to recalculate my object normals to point outside. And I'll also add an edge split modifier and click smooth at the shading tab here. Alright. I'll hit 7 on my mirror keypad and hit shift A and add mess another circle and we'll use 6 vertices for our circle here I'll hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode and hit S to scale my circle down and now I'll hit Z and Y to grab and move on the Y axis let's scale it down a bit more alright and I'll hit 1 on my mirror keypad and hit Z and Z move my circle down alright let's take a closer look I'll hit uh, E to extrude and Z to extrude on the Z axis and about here E for another extrusion and Z to extrude on the Z axis and scale those vertices down and again I'm trying to create you can see pretty much in every object this nice little fillet here, this nice little rounding because I don't want everything to be you know sharp and and ugly I'll hit the E key to extrude once more, right mouse button click and hit S to scale my vertices down E and Z extrude up E right mouse button click and S to scale and E and Z, another extrusion hit the S key to scale it up, E and Z another extrusion at about here now E and Z extruding again on the Z axis now I'll scale those vertices down alright now E and right mouse button and hit S scale them down and perhaps Z and Z move them up just by a bit and now I'll select 1 hold down the shift key 2, 3 and 4 vertices here and I'll hit F for a face I'll select the rest, the rest of the vertices here 1, 2, 3, F for a face and 1, 2 and 3 and F for a face alright 
I'll hit Control Tab for the Mesh Select Mode and select Face. I'll hold down the Shift key to select this face as well. We have two faces now. And I'll hit the E key to extrude, move them down. And I'll also change the pivot point here to individual origins and hit the S key to scale my faces here down. Okay, perhaps Z and Z move them up a bit. Alright. Now for this object as well, I'll hit the A key to deselect all and A again to select all. And hit Ctrl N to recalculate my object normals to point outside. Now tab key to switch back to object mode. I'll hit 1 on my mirror keypad. And hit the Z key for the wireframe mode. I'll just hit G and Z. I'll move my part here up on the Z axis. Alright. Now I'll hit the Z key again for the solid mode and for this one as well we also have the origin point uh, it's pretty high but it's still at the center of the X and Y axis so now if I hit the Alt D to create a link duplicate and R and Z to rotate on the Z axis you can see how it all works okay Let's create another duplicate, Alt D, R and Z. Alright. Alt D, R and Z. And by creating link duplicates here, we'll be applying the materials and on one object and the materials will be then applied to every object, uh, to every linked duplicate in the scene. So this is good, Alt D, once more, R, Z, for minus 60 degrees. And I'll hold down the Shift key to select all my objects here. Hit 7 for the top of view. And hit Alt D, R and Z, and I'll rotate my uh, copied objects here for 100 degrees, for 180 degrees on the Z axis. Alright. Now I think the modeling part here is ready. We'll apply some materials to our objects. And just to make our uh, life easier, we'll be using the existing materials and then making them single user copies and modifying them a bit. I'll select the inner circle here and move over to the material panel. Click this little icon for the materials. And I'll click right here and I'll be using the hexa one material. I'll also click this little two icon. We want to have a unique uh, single user material for this object. And I'll call this one Circle In 1. And I'll modify the uh, material here a bit. I'll select the white color here on uh, my ramp. And uh, let's make it darker. Okay, and now that we've finished the modeling and we're uh, changing and assigning materials for our scene, we could also turn the viewport shading back to texture so we can uh, clearly see how the materials affect our scene, since pretty much what we see here in the viewport is also what we'll be uh, seeing in the Blender game engine. Alright, this material looks nice. I'll right click to select the cube, the array of cubes here. And I'll hit the tab key to switch from uh, object to edit mode. A new material for this one, click this little icon. And of course, won't be using an entirely new material, just like the hexa2 material. And alright. And I'll hit the plus key here. I'm switching back to object mode. So I can, yeah, let's first. Create a single user copy, a single material, a unique material for this object as well. And I'll call this one RA underscore cube. I'll change the color a bit for my object here. Bring it a bit on the blue side. And I think I'll increase the hardness. Okay, 
and now I'll hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode select those faces, one, hold down the shift key to select this one and I'll add another material to the same object, hit the plus icon and I'll select the bright one and now that we have the material here selected and the uh, specific face that we want the material to be applied I'll click assign alright now I'll hit the tab key to switch back to object mode select my part here, my object here and I'll also be using the hexagon 1 material for this one I like the hexagon 1 material, looks kind of uh, metallic so I'll be cloning the ink and modifying it for uh, lots of my parts here again creating a single user copy a unique material for this object and I'll call this one hexa underscore small alright now I'll hit the tab key, let's add some more materials to our object here I'll hit the A key to deselect all and hold down the ALT key, select this loop right here, you can see it and click the plus icon, add a new material, well actually not a new material but we'll be using the bright 2 material and click assign to assign the specific material on the selected faces alright now moving over here, I'll hit the A key to deselect all, hold down the ALT key I'll select those two loops here uh, holding down the ALT key and right mouse button clicking to select this one and now I'll hold SHIFT ALT and click alright and hit the plus icon and this time I'll uh, I'll actually create a new material for this part and I'll call this one, let's call it hexa small 2 and I think I'll bring the diffuse intensity down I want to make it dark and I'll also bring the hardness down to 10 and the intensity down to 0 0.1 alright now once more we have the material selected the faces that we want the material to be applied and click assign and I'll also select this face right here hold down the shift key select this one hit the plus icon let's use another material from our scene and we'll use the bright one and click assign alright now I think this looks pretty cool pretty nice and again we'll be uh, we might be modifying the materials later on so I'm hitting the tab key to switch from uh, edit to object mode select my circle here and let's add a material to this one as well I'll select the hexa 1 and create a single user copy for my out for my middle circle here and let's call this one circle underscore mid we'll be having another circle and expanding out later on and now that we have a unique material let's change this one a bit I'm selecting Y color from the ramp and I'll make this one even darker okay and let's also do the following we want this part right here along with uh, our little object to follow the rotation of the hexa of the hexa object here so I select this part hold down the shift key and select the rest then I'll select my circle here and finally select the hexa object and hit Control P and set parent to object and now if we hit the P key you can see that we have the uh, the parts here, the specific parts here following the object rotation now I'll hit the escape key and I'll hit 1 on my memory keypad to switch the front author view and I'll just 
select let's select those objects again all right select the inner circle select the cube body select the mid circle and I'll hit 1 for the front of view I'll hit G and Z I'll move them up and as you can see if I hit G and Z now we're getting some weird stuff uh, and that's because we've set the RA here the RA uh, object offset and the empty stays in place so this affects the RA modifier so I'll also hold down the shift key and select the, uh, the empty here as well and now I'll hit G and Z and move them up now I'll select the inner circle and the RA and of course the empty hit one again Z and Z let's move this one up and about here and I'll only select the circle now, hit the tab key to switch from uh, object to edit mode and hit control tab for the mesh select mode, select vertex I'll hit the A key to deselect all and B select the bottom vertices here and I'll hit Z and Z, move them down and about here now I'll hit the tab key to switch from edit to object mode, select the hexa object and hit tab again I'll modify this one just by a tiny bit. I'll hit the A key to deselect all B. Select those vertices, hit Z and Z, move them on the Z axis. And now I'll hit A to deselect all B. Select those. And I'll hit Z and Z, move them on the Z axis at about here. Now I'll hit the Tab key to switch back to object mode. And you can see what we got here. I'll just hit the B key to play and see it and I think it looks pretty nice okay I'll now hit escape key to move back to my 3d view and I'll save this one file save as and save this one as system 6 and click save as blender file all right now moving on into further building some objects here for our scene I'll hit shift a and add mesa cube I'll hit 1 on my mirror keypad to switch to front of view and hit Z and X to move my cube here on the X axis and now I'll hit S and Z to scale my cube on the Z axis at about here now I'll also hit S and Y to scale my cube on the Y axis and I'll scale it down at about here now moving over to the object data, I'll bring the location back to zero and I'll hit M to move my cube on the third layer and I'll also move to the third layer as well and now I'll hit Z once to move into wireframe uh, shading mode for the viewport and Z again to switch to solid mode and I'm switching to solid mode so I can work easier and I've also moved my cube here to the third layer so I won't be having any objects here on my way so I'm focusing on this object now, I'll hit 1 on my mirror keypad to switch to front of view and I'll hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode and hit ctrl R for a loop cut click the left mouse button and I'll move my uh, loop cut here up and about here Control R for another loop cut. Click and move your mouse up to move this one. And Control R for another loop cut. I'll put this one at about here. And now Control R again, and I want four loop cuts here. So I'll scroll my mouse wheel up. Okay. And now I'll hit S and Z to scale on the Z axis and scale my loop cuts up and now I'll hit the A key to deselect all, hit B for the selection tool here, click and drag, select those two vertices here where we're actually selecting four vertices as you can see and hit G and X to grab and move them on the X axis alright now I'll hit A to deselect all and B, click and drag, select those hit G and X to move them on the X axis and about here 
hit the A key to deselect all, B, click and drag, select those, G and X, and move them on the X axis as well. OK. So you can see what we're getting here. I'll hit Control Tab for the mesh select mode and select Face. I'll hold down the Shift key and click to select these faces here. And I'll hit the E key to extrude. Right mouse button click to cancel any movement for the extruded faces. I'll hit S and Y to scale the extruded faces on the Y axis. And about here. OK. Now I'll hit E to extrude and move the extruded faces back. And about here. And I'll also hit S and Y to scale them on the Y axis. All right. Now moving over to the bottom of my object here, I'll right mouse button click this face to select it and hit X to delete faces. I'll also select this one, hit X and select delete faces and this one, X and delete faces. Alright. I'll move over to the top now. OK, select this one, hit X and delete faces. Select this one, X again and delete faces, and finally this one and hit X and delete faces. Now I'll hit Control Tab for the mesh select mode and I'll select vertex. I'll select this vertex here and hold down the Shift key, select 1, 2, 3, 4 and hit F for a face. Moving over to the other side, 1, hold down the Shift key, 2, 3, 4 and F for a face. And finally, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and hit F for a face. Alright. Now I'll add another mesh while I'm in edit mode, and the mesh will be a part of the existing object of this one. So I'll hit Shift A and add a circle. Our circle here will use 6 vertices. Type in 6 and enter. And I'll hit R, Y, and 90 to rotate my circle here for 90 degrees on the Y axis. I'll hit 3 on my numeric keypad for the right ortho view and hit the S key to scale my circle down at about here and now I'll hit 1 on my numeric keypad for the front ortho view I'll hit G and X to grab my circle here and move it on the X axis I'll hit the E key to extrude and X to extrude it on the X axis move the extruded vertices at about here I'll now hit the E key to extrude, again hit X to extrude on the X axis. I'll scale those vertices here down. Hit E once more, right mouse button click to cancel any movement. I'll hit S to scale them down at about here. I'll hit E once more and X extrude on the X axis at about here. E, right mouse button click and S to scale my vertices up. OK. E, another extrusion on the X axis. Move them away and S to scale them up. E, X, extrude. At about here. E, right mouse button click or perhaps X to move them on the X axis. Let's move them out. S to scale them down. Now E, right mouse button click to cancel any movement and S to scale them down. Uh, about here. Now E another extrusion X on the X axis at uh, about here S to scale them down and E another extrusion on the X axis as well and hit S to scale those down as well. Now I'll select one, hold down the shift key, two, three and four vertices here and hit F for the face. One, two, three, four and hit F for the face. And I'll do the same thing at the back side of my cylinder here of my object. 4 and F for a face. 1, hold down the shift key. 2, 3, 4 and hit F for a face. Now as I can see the cylinder here, this part here is a bit too thick for my object. So I'll hit Ctrl L to select length. And I'll hit S and Shift X 
to scale on the y and z axis only and I'll scale it down let's see at uh, about here I'll hit 1 on my numeric keypad for the front author view and I have this part here selected and I'll hit shift D and Z to create a duplicate and move it on the Z axis I'll move it up Let's set it at about here and shift D and Z and move another duplicate down at about here okay So let's move on into building our object. I want two panels here, two screens here. So I'll hit Control Tab for the mesh select mode and select face. I'll select this face right here. Hit the E key to extrude, right mouse button click to cancel any movement. I'll hit S and scale my face down, my extruded face down. I'll hit E, extrude out, and E once more for a small extrusion and hit the S key to scale the extruded face down now E for another extrusion right mouse button click and S to scale at about here and E again for a final extrusion and this time around I'll bring this face in okay I want to do the same thing on this side so I'm selecting this face and hitting X and select delete faces and what I could also also do here is to create a loop cut uh, uh, at about here and cutting these faces and then using a mirror modifier. But I want my objects to be kept at uh, at low poly since uh, we'll be creating and using our little toy, our little scene here in the Blender game engine. So what I'll do is select this face right here, right mouse button click to select it and move over to select and click more select more select more and for the final time select more now I'll hit 7 on my numeric keypad to switch to top author view and I'll also change the uh, pivot point here to medium point and I'll hit shift D to duplicate and Y to move my duplicate on the Y axis and I'll hit R and Z rotate it on the Z axis for 180 degrees and let's move it on the X on the Y axis a bit more at about here okay or perhaps let's move it Z and Y okay that's better So let's take a look and what we have to do now is connect this part here to the rest of the object. I'll hit control tab for the mesh select mode and select vertex. And I'm right clicking this vertex here to select it. Hold down the shift key. 2, 3 and 4 and I'll hit F for a face. 1, 2 and hold down the shift key. 3, 4 and hit F for a face. Now over here, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and hit F for a face. And 1, hold down the shift key, 2, 3, 4, and hit F for a face. Okay. Now the modeling part is finished. I'll hit the A key to deselect all, A again to select all, and I'll hit Ctrl N to recalculate my object normals to point outside. Alright. Now I'll hit the tab key to switch from edit to object mode and we have our part here ready. I think it looks pretty nice. And I'll hit the M key to move it and I'll move it to layer 1. I'll also move to layer 1 and hit 1 on my numeric keypad to switch to front author view. I'll grab my part here, hit Z to grab it and move it. Let's move it 